Hi guys, I hope you are doing well and in this video we are going to be discussing about the relationship between the average product and the marginal product and we will also be seeing how are we going to draw the average product curve. Now guys, I have made a table here which says the quantity of workers and I have shown the total product, the marginal product and the average product. And as you can see, as we increase the quantity of the product, uh, sorry, as we increase the quantity of the workers, our total product initially rises and then it rises at a faster rate before the rate at which it increases slows down because of the law of diminishing returns which means means that the marginal product is falling and so on and so forth. So the same concept that we have discussed in the previous videos. Now if you see that the, con the, the diminishing marginal returns basically sets in at the fourth worker when we hire the fourth worker and that is when the marginal product starts to fall down from 14 to 12 which means that after the hiring of the fourth worker or because of the hiring of the fourth worker I should say um, only 12 more units are being added or contributed to the total product right. Now, we've already seen these in the previous videos as well, so it's, it's more focused on the average product, right? So, guys, first of all, if you assess this table, uh, right, you can see the uh, how the average product numbers are changing. So, initially, we know what average product is. Average product is basically telling us the output uh, per worker. It's telling us that how much, uh, you know, one worker is actually producing on an average. So, if we see that as we are increasing the number of workers the average product goes up by the way the formula was you know total product divided by the quantity of the workers so you see as you increase the number of workers the average product goes up from 3 to 5 right then it goes up from 5 to 8 so basically it's increasing and then it goes from 8 to 9 and then after 9 it goes starts to fall it falls from 9 to 8 8 to 7 7 to 6 and then 5 so we see if initially the average product is going up so so here we establish a relation that the average product is initially increasing and then the average product starts to fall so a lot of people think that you know um, average product starts to fall because of the diminishing marginal returns but yeah the diminishing marginal returns does play a fact but there is very important thing that I need to tell you that you can see that the diminishing marginal return sets in even at the fourth worker so so the diminishing marginal return is set in at the fourth worker which should ideally mean that you know the average product should have decreased from eight maybe you should have gone to seven or six because after the fourth worker the diminishing marginal return is set in but we see that even after the diminishing marginal return sets in we you know at the fourth worker and our marginal product falls from 14 to 12 still the average rises from 8 to 9 right so first of all you need to be very clear on this that the the rise or the fall of the average product although it does has to do with a bit of it it has to do with a diminishing marginal returns but it is not entirely dependent on diminishing marginal returns it's more dependent on the marginal product the marginal product is basically what is going to drive the average up and or the average down and i'm going to be coming to that so don't worry the so first of all we have started with the relation that the average product is going up and then the average product is going down so if that's the case we see that you know the average product is basically going up and then it takes a downward turn it basically goes down and as far as the diagram for the marginal product is concerned we've already seen that in the previous videos as well the marginal product goes up and then it goes down right we've, and then it turns into negative um, so we've already seen that as well also remember that when you are going to be drawing the curves so you will start the average and the marginal product both from the same point right why because obviously um, when we hire the first worker the marginal and the average would be the same so that is why you will start it from the same point right now uh, so guys, there are there is one important thing that I need you to understand over here is, so first of all, we see that the average product is rising, right? And then the average product is falling. But okay, so fa first of all, remember that the average product is rising from 3 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 9. Now guys, you need to understand that, listen, so there is a reason why the average product is rising. The average product is going up because the marginal product is rising which means the marginal product is greater than the average product the marginal product is rising not only it is rising but the marginal product is greater than the average product i'll tell you what this means so for example at the first worker the mp and the ap both are the same right but when you hire the second worker so because of the hiring of the second worker the contribution to the extra contribution to the total product is seven right which means that on an average the the average product is three Right, that was the average initially. But when you hire the second worker, the marginal product or the extra contribution to the total output because of the hiring of the second worker was seven. So the marginal product was seven. Now you guys tell me, is seven bigger or three bigger? Obviously seven is bigger, which means that marginal product is greater than average product, which means that seven is greater than three. Now because seven is greater than three or the average or the marginal product is greater than the average product, 
basically what happens is that when we hire two workers it brings the average up from 3 to 5 understood there is a reason why the average is rising and that is rising because of the marginal being more than the average then and now when we hire the third worker we see that the marginal product is 14 while the average of two workers was 5 so the average output of the two workers was 5 so when we hire the third worker the extra contribution made because of the hiring of the third worker was 14 and because of the hiring of the third worker the extra contribution made was 14 which was much greater than the average so this was the marginal while this was the average and since the 14 was greater than 5 since the marginal was greater the extra contribution made was much more than what the average of the firm was because the average of the firm was 5 right because we had hired two workers now once we hired the third worker the extra contribution to total output was 14 which was much greater than the average 5 that again pulled the average up from 5 to 8 now when we hire the fourth worker guys now this now here it where it gets in, gets interesting when we hire the fourth worker diminishing return sets in and the marginal product falls from 14 to 12 now ideally if diminishing margin if diminishing marginal return sets in the average should actually fall from 8 it should go to maybe 7 6 or 5 or whatever but still we see that the average is rising now the reason is that even though the diminishing marginal return sets in at the fourth worker and the marginal product falls from 14 to 12 still we see that despite the fact that diminishing returns had set in and the marginal product has started to go down but still the marginal is greater than the average although diminishing return is set in and the marginal product is and the marginal product has started to fall i'm going to repeat it again the diminishing returns are set in and the marginal product has started to fall because if you see the marginal product curve look at the marginal product curve initially the marginal product was rising right initially the marginal product was rising but now the marginal product has started to fall it's going down right but if you look at the movement of the average product, if you look at the movement of the average product, if you see even though marginal product is going down, right? Look at this. Even though marginal is going down, it's going down. Still, still, look, look at this area. Look at this point. Wait a minute. L look at this point. This is marginal and this marginal is on a downward movement, right? The marginal is going down. But still this marginal is more than the average, right? E Similarly, similarly guys, similarly, this marginal is more than the average. Now because the marginal is more than the average, although diminishing return has, start, has set in beyond point B. Beyond point B, diminishing return has set in, marginal product has started to go down. But even though it's going down, it's still more than the average. So since marginal product is more than the average product, basically it is still pulling the average upwards. You see that the graph of average product is going up, right? the graph of the average product is going up and beyond point C basically beyond point C the average product starts to fall Be beyond point C is the point where the average product actually starts to go down and there's a reason why the average product starts to go down the reason why average product guys starts to go down is because you see so, so, so basically marginal product is going down we know that the marginal product is going down that's going down right and and obviously obviously the average product is going up. So we see that the marginal is going down while the average product is going up. But because the marginal, despite the fact it's going down, it's still more than the average, it's pulling the average up, right? So they both will intersect at one point where they both will be the same, right? So basically we could say that if this is the average product, right? If this is the average product, and our so our marginal product will basically intersect the average product on its highest point. So this is the rule. The marginal product will be equal to the average product on the average product's highest point. And there's a reason for that because when will the average product starts to fall? If I ask you this question, guys, just think for a moment. When will average product starts to fall? Average product kab decrease hoga? When will it fall? Obviously, tabhi decrease hoga na jab wo highest ho chuka hoga. Average product highest hone ke baad to decrease hoga. Average product would start falling once it is the highest. So when the average product is the highest, beyond average product being the highest, after the average product is the highest, it would start to go down, right? But obviously something will bring the average down, right? Something will basically bring the average down. There is a reason why average will start falling. And the reason is simply, like I said, if this is the highest point of the average product, so if and beyond this point, the average product starts to go down, it means something is pulling the average down and that is basically the marginal product. So if you if you look at the marginal product, basically this is the common intersection point and beyond this point, right? Beyond this point, if I take this point for instance, if I take, sorry, if I, if I, if I, if, I, if let's say I take this point, now at this point, this is the 
this is the marginal right and the marginal is less than the and this is the average right this is the average and we see that the marginal is less than the average so in this area basically we see that the marginal is less than the average because if you if you look at this area if you look at this area the average is more while the marginal is less so since marginal is less than the average it is basically pulling the average down and that is why the average product curve starts to go down there that is why the average product curve starts to go down so beyond the point where the average product is highest that is the point where the marginal product cuts the average product curve and the moment it intersects the average product curve on its highest point the marginal product gets less than the average product so what i am saying is that marginal product is going up initially and marginal product is greater than average product so the result is average product starts to rise right then marginal product is equal to the average product on the average product's highest point right on the average product's highest point and then it intersects the average product on the average product's highest point and then beyond this point beyond the average product's highest point the mp is obviously falling because diminishing returns are set in but the beyond that highest point of average product the marginal product gets less than the average product and that actually pulls the average product down and that is basically the reason why the average product is basically falling after point c right so this is what i wanted to explain it to you and you can see it over here as well look at look at the fourth uh, uh, because of the hiring of the fourth worker although diminishing return is set in at the fourth worker but still the marginal product is more than the average product so the average again has increased from 8 to 9 right but because of the fifth worker but because of the fifth worker what happens is that the fifth worker's um, contribution uh, be or i should say not the fifth worker's contribution i should say that because of the hiring of the fifth worker the contribution uh, to the total output is basically four units and now these four which is a marginal product and four is less than the average so it bought the average from 9 to 8 right and in fact i'll tell you something i mean and then again because the sixth worker the marginal product is 2 and again that's less than the average of 8 it again brought the average down to 7 and then 0 is less than 7 it again brought the average to 6 and then obviously minus 2 is less than 6 so it again brought the average to 5 so basically that's the reason and this is quite simple guys so for example let's say there are there are there are two students in a class 1 and 2 right so wait a minute there's student a and there's student b So student, so there's a so there's a ten mark test, right? Student A scores out of ten, he scores let's say five, and student B let's say scores six, right? So if I want to you to calculate the average score, the average score would be six plus five, right? That is eleven. Um, That's eleven, right? And eleven divided by I would basically divide it by two, right? Because I'm calculating the average score of two students, right? So it would be eleven divided by two. so that should be i think 5.5 right now guys let's assume that a third student comes in the class and um, i'm calling him student c now the third student also comes in the class and he also gives a test and let's suppose he scores maybe 9 out of 10 right he scores 9 out of 10 now guys you tell me something what's the average score the average score is 5.5 what has student c scored student c has scored 9 So, so what's the marginal? The marginal is nine. Remember, marginal is extra. So the extra score because of the third student is nine. So that because the third, so if I, so basically, what's the marginal score? The marginal score is nine, right? So student C, student C, student C is contributing nine marks to the total score of three students now, right? So basically, we know that the marginal is more than the average. Nine is greater than five point five. Now, if I want to cal, now if I want to calculate the average score of three students, it will bring the average up. It will increase the average from five to five, from five point five to let's see what will now be the new average. So the new average should be nine plus six plus five divided by three, and this should be somewhat. Uh, now the new average is basically six point six seven. So you see how the average has gone up from five point five to six point six seven. So the basic rule is. that the marginal basically so yeah law of diminishing return does have an impact but just because the law of diminishing return sets in doesn't mean that the average will now starts to fall even if the law of diminishing return set, sets in and still still the marginal is more than the average it will still basically keep the uh, you know average uh, increasing but like we said that if you still keep on hiring more and more workers the law the diminishing return starts to get worse and then the rate at which the you know marginal output declines gets to tend to get you know faster so each time more workers are hired less marginal output is contributed to the total product 
So ultimately, the Mars Hill becomes less than the average and it basically pulls the average down. And let's see what I've written over here. Basically, I've written that average product, this is basically, I'm just summing it up, what are the conclusions drawn? So average product rises at first, you've seen that it continues rising as long as the addition to output, addition to output, which means the marginal product, because of hiring of the last worker, is greater than the average output. So as long as marginal is more than the average, it will bring the average up. So as long as MP is greater than AP, the AP keeps on rising, MP pulls the AP up, right? This continues beyond point B, we know that, right? Beyond, so at this point, why have I mentioned beyond point B? Because beyond point B, diminishing return sets in. But even though diminishing return sets in, look at this area. If you see this area, you know, beyond this area, still the average is rising, right? Still the average is rising. So, so that's why I've written it continues beyond point B because marginal was still more than the average. So even though MP is now falling beyond point B, the AP goes on rising as long as the MP is above the AP. Hence, AP goes on rising to point C. Ultimately, AP just, you know, touches its maximum uh, point, that is point C. And beyond point C, obviously, MP is less than the AP, right? This means new workers add less to total output because MP is less. So, so since MP is less, it means new workers add less to total output, which means that they add below the average. What the average is, they're adding the contribution made to the total output is less than what the average is. And this pulls the average down. Simple phenomena. So two things. First of all, MP greater than AP, AP will start to rise. MP less than AP, AP will start to fall. How you will be drawing the graph? It's very simple. Basically, average will basically increase and then it will go down, right? But MP, so you will start the MP curve from this point as well. So MP will basically cut the average product on its highest point. That's the reason, guys. That's simple. Good stuff. And here, I think we have ended uh, the, the, the production part. Since we are doing the supply theory, we have initially covered what diminishing returns is. We have, we have covered what short-run costs are. We have, sorry, not the short-run costs. We have covered what diminishing return is. We have covered what total product, margin, and average product are. We have covered the graphs as well. We've seen the calculations. Now, in the next video, we will be moving on to cost and we will be understanding what costs are, especially what are explicit and implicit costs. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all around in the next video. Until then, Take care and subscribe to my channel.